I just assumed I'd play the part Of keeping you in the right direction No matter how, how your confidence may fall I'll be here as your foundation What's up everybody welcome back to another video I'm glad you guys are here and also I'm extremely glad that D2 fall is out of the way second year fall is completely just a miserable time and it's done it's over with school is just that much more stress-free but it's already 2019 I started a new semester yesterday and we have a lot to do so first things first, you guys already know my, my whiteboard is my lifeblood. It keeps me organized, keeps me on track. I don't miss assignments. I don't fall behind because I know when all my tests are. We need to get this situated for this new month. This still says Christmas boards. I'm done with that. Let's get you guys on the tripod. Cue the music, dim the lights, and here we go. My own world of make believe. Kids screaming in the cradles, profanities. I see the world through ice covered in ink and bleach. Cross out the ones who help my cry. So I just finished filling out everything, and I don't know if you guys can see, but there's not that much on there. Actually, in January this month, we don't have any tests or quizzes coming up, so that's kind of nice. We just have a couple of uh, lab work due dates. Actually, we have a lot of lab stuff, so I'm gonna be trying to stay organized with that. We'll have to wait till February to get into all of the tests and quizzes of the semester, and I'm not complaining. All right, so just like I said before, I have a ton of lab work, and I'm gonna take you guys into the lab and show you a little bit of how dental schools actually go about um, doing impressions and making casts and making duplicate casts. Sometimes it's really annoying and hopefully I don't mess up, but if I do, you guys will be able to see the frustration that can be dental work sometimes. But before I go, I wanted to show you guys this cool book. I am not really into self-help books that much. I think it's just kind of like, you're paying a lot of money for some dude to tell you to try hard. Um, but this book right here, Make Your Bed, I got it for Christmas, I think it's by um, Admiral William H. McCraven. It's called Make Your Bed. I got it for Christmas and it's 130 pages long. I read it, I read the whole book on my flight back out to Columbus from Florida. And if you guys are looking for kind of like just something to get you motivated in life. And I think it's super important to always have a very good big picture grasp on all of your goals and the ups and downs of life, how you get through them. This book, Make Your Bed, is one of the best ones I've ever read. It's a super quick read and I highly recommend it. I know all of these little tiny short stories that are in here, there's about 10 of them would have helped me get through a lot of situations in undergrad and I'm using them now or I'm gonna use them going forward in dental school. So uh, I'll throw a link uh, down below in the description so go check it out. Right now I gotta go get some lab work done so let's head over to school. If you guys have an option of going to school in Florida, absolutely go to school in Florida. No, not my friend. All right, we got everything set up here in lab and what I'm gonna show you guys today is how we duplicate a stone mold of teeth right here. So you have a patient comes in, they need a crown um, or a bridge. We are going to take a first impression and pour this stone model 
for that patient. And because we don't want to risk breaking that original uh, stone mold, we are going to duplicate this so we can wreck that one and still have a good one to go off of. That way the patient doesn't have to come back in and do a whole other appointment and waste a bunch of time. So I have this soaking in water and soap because if we don't do that for at least like 10, 15 minutes, when we take the alginate impression, that alginate is gonna go, it's just gonna stick to the stone. I did it last week and it was, it took me like an hour to get all of the alginate off. It's a pain. Don't do it if you guys are taking it, uh, if you guys are trying to do this, absolutely soak your stone in water for at least 10 to 15 minutes before you do it. But let's get started. So these are all the materials that we're gonna use. Spatula, impression tray, buffalo knife, wax to, for the stone mold of this uh, bowl, <laughs> we call it the green bowl, uh, some water, alginate, and some microstone, which is this stuff right here. Okay, first step, we are going to take our alginate and mix it with some water, put it in our impression tray, and put that over the first stone mold that we have right here. Okay, first step, alginate in here. Then pour the water in and mix it. So alginate has about a two to three minute setting time, which is really good for the patient because once the alginate is in their mouth, it sets up really quick and they don't have to sit there with um, kind of this goo in their mouth for a long time. But it makes it a little bit tricky because you have to learn how to work with it really fast. You don't want it to set up before you um, are seeding the tray, seeding the impression tray in the patient's mouth. But since we don't really have to deal with the patient right now, it isn't as hard as it normally would be. So we try to get the kind of this creamy, a little bit thick texture, and then we are good to go. So we're gonna load, it's actually kind of runny, so I might wait a little bit. So we just load it up in this, whoop, yeah, it's really runny. We load it up in this tray. So we have a little bit of extra time since it's so runny. We can let it just naturally set up just a bit. And you put a little bit on your glove so you can kind of test it to see how much it's setting up. Take our impression, or stick, take our stone mold and just put it on top. See that it seats pretty well all the way around. Looks like we got it. So now we just sit here and hold it to make sure that it doesn't move too much. Yeah, this is really runny. I actually might have to do this again. So not good. Okay, so once we get our alginate impression out, this one actually didn't come out that good, but since I don't want to redo it, that's gonna work fine for us. Kinda ripped a little bit, so I could have soaked this cast a little bit more, but as soon as you guys take an alginate impression, whether you're doing it for duplicating casts or um, for a real patient, you wanna immediately take it out, wrap it with a kind of dripping wet paper towel, because as soon as this alginate is out of the mouth of the patient or kind of off this cast, it's gonna start sucking up air and that drying is going to cause it to shift and change like the dimensions of it. So you wanna wrap it with something wet so that it can absorb the moisture, absorb the moisture from here and change as little as possible. So we have to do this pretty quick. Next step is to use this microstone which is this stone what this is made out of we're going to mix it up and pour it in here and i have to do this kind of fast as well we're going to put it on this plate which is a vibrator and it allows us to get as little air bubbles as possible now this stuff does not set up nearly as fast i think it has like a 
five to ten minute working time and sets up fully in about 45 minutes so we have a lot more time than we did with the alginate which is good for you know working with it but as soon as you have it um, in the cast you want it to set up really fast because you're just wasting time and you don't have that you kind of have to just sit there and wait oh crap so I forgot this this is called red boxing wax we're going to wrap it around here so that it kind of already has these uh, this big base around the cast so that we don't have to pour another um, another stone mix. It's really annoying. It'll save you a lot of time. If you guys have this, I definitely recommend using it. My impression actually has a little bit of show through. I don't know if you guys can see it, but you can see the bottom of the tray kind of at the cusp of that. You do not want that in real life, but for this, it'll be okay. You guys can see all the air bubbles that are coming to the top right there. That's what we're trying to get rid of. Now we start in one quadrant, one side of the mouth, and work our way to the other. That way the stone can just fill in and hopefully get as little air bubbles as possible. is how we do that. I think there might be a huge air bubble um, right where one of those crown preps were. So hopefully not because if there is we'd have to redo the whole thing. But we are going to let this set up for about 45 minutes and come back and pop this off and see how we did. Okay, moment of truth. We have let this sit for about 45 minutes. Let's take off this boxing wax and see. Okay. So this is normal, now we have to take a, a buffalo knife and kind of knock out all of the stone around our impression tray and uh, take it out. See, let's see what we got. Okay, here we are. So this is the original, and this was the duplicated cast. I haven't trimmed it yet, so you can see how thick it is around here. Kind of messy, but that's okay. We could trim that up. Now, I'll try to zoom in and show you kind of the deep, different um, details of both. This is the original. It's going to be much more smooth and clean. And this one, um, depending on what we are using it for, I, it would work. Um, there's a lot of bubbles around here and it's not the best duplicated cast, so if it were something that we needed a ton of occlusal anatomy for, I'd probably redo it. But those are the steps on how to duplicate a cast. We have done this probably like eight or nine times this semester, uh, the first two weeks of this semester. So you guys are gonna have to do this a lot, get good at it, and after a while, it's not so bad. At first, one of the most annoying things that you could possibly do, and it's also frustrating because in the real world, as a practicing dentist, I'm never going to do this. I'm either going to have a digital impression machine or one of my assistants is going to do this. I guess it's just good to know in case your assistant is having problems or you need to train a new assistant. You got to know how to do this. But it's kind of frustrating having to spend a lot of time on something you know you're not going to use that much out in the real world. But what can you do? That is probably 70% of dental school learning kind of theory behind a lot of the older ways of doing things in uh, in lab and in the clinic and then once you get out into the real world probably your first three or four months you're gonna learn more than you ever did through the four years of dental school that you paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for but that's the world we live in I'm gonna wrap up the video right there I hope you guys liked it and I will catch you in the next one